How's it going everybody? Josh KI6NAZ. You know, ham radio can really create a driving hunger. And today, using RF, we're gonna cook some hot dogs. Thanks again for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. If you haven't already, click the thumbs up, subscribe, click that bell so I can send you a video every time I post one. I've always been fascinated with the effects of RF uh, against people, you know, organic things, you know, you know, whatever. And I really wanna see if we can warm up hot dogs, let alone possibly cook them, show some evidence of a burn or something like that. So we're gonna be taking some ballpark francs because you know they plump when you cook them. So that should be a good judge of uh, whether or not we've got some hot dogs cooking. So I'm gonna get that set up with a nice vertical antenna that we're gonna put about 50 to 100 watts through for as long a time as I can until they're ready to eat. All right, we've got our highly uh, scientific human, human replacements, human analogs. Uh, I'm going to take a baseline here. We're gonna get a, <laughs> a measurement for our hot dog. Uh, I'm going to take it at the at the widest spot. It is eight and nineteen thousandths of an inch. It looks like. I feel like we need to have them spaced a little bit, um, and then another piece on top, and then we'll sandwich the whole thing together with a couple of uh, folds. Woo! Right in my eye there. Sorry if that got in your eye too. <laughs> Okay, so now what I want to do is a couple of folds, a couple of folds, and let's, uh, let's go wrap the antenna with this and see if we can affix it somehow. So for our test today, I am using the Wolf River Coil base with the Chameleon Micro, Shaw Micro on top, and then I'm using the Chameleon 17 foot vertical whip. What I want to do is starting you know, a couple of feet up on the on the mat on the on the vertical here. I want to put a packet of hot dogs, and then I want to go up a little bit higher, another packet, a little bit higher, another packet, until we've got you know a, a decent amount of hot dogs on this thing, and then we'll start cooking them using FT8. This is harder than I thought. The trick is getting them vertical. That's the issue here. Okay, I learned a lot from that first one, so I'm gonna hold them. Uh, a little bit. I want to begin wrapping right here and just start wrapping them in while still holding the bottom because otherwise this thing gonna they're gonna slide around diagonal and then you're done at that point. And this one's a little cattywampus. Got it. Got it. Wrap it up. All right, here's the first real test. Uh, I'm gonna hit tune running my laptop. We got tune, so it's transmitting. Now, I appreciate you probably can't see this, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and find a location. I haven't been transmitting in a little while. <clears throat> and we're putting out 50 watts right there. I'll get cranking that up in a little bit, but stable is good. If we're stably transmitting, that's all I really care about. And now we're just gonna sit back and watch our, our dogs cook. Let it, let it be known that this started at 1.48 p.m. Sunday, <laughs> April 4th. <laughs> I don't know how long this is gonna take. I also have one uh, curiosity. I think I'm actually gonna try and lower the telescopic whip and push um, the hot dog, one of the hot dogs up, the two hot dogs up, get it as tight as I can, uh, and then e elongate the rest of the antenna. I think getting it up there is going to be fun. Let's do that. We're transmitting for about 10 minutes. Ooh, this one just came down on me. And uh, I don't, I don't see any appreciable or feel any appreciable temperature change. Let's uh, go with that. So here, let's take the Hoist this one up there. And I really want to squish this down, make a real, <laughs> real positive connection. We might get more, uh, more heat just off of it <laughs> being in the sun. Okay, 
Let's try that again. So I'm curious, we've been using 20 meters for a little while now, and I have a feeling that we should go higher frequency and see what the effects are. I'll jump around to different bands and, and run for a while, and then I'll do a hand check for temperature just to see if it's heating up. My curiosity is different frequencies obviously are going to affect organic material differently than others, and generally the higher you go up the frequency chain, that's when you have to be more concerned with RFI exposure. So let's go straight to 10 meters, and then we'll even do six, <laughs> I think. I'm also learning a lot about this, uh, this amp. The tuning process can vary significantly depending on what radio transmitter you're running into it. It, it really is kind of surprising how it functions. And with that said, we got a really nice opening on, uh, on 17 meters here. I'm getting all the way to the east coast with this and I'm putting out roughly 80 or so watts. So we're gonna play around with this a little bit. Um, seems like I'm getting out a little bit, but contacts are sparse. So the battery of arms for this thing is you connect the DIN connector on the back of the G90 into the S, the CE19 interface, which then goes into the amp. When you click the tune button, that makes the radio control the internal tuner in the amplifier. If you hold down tune, it will attempt a tune cycle. I've found though, if you have a mode like AM or if you're using a digital mode like uh, WSJTX, you know, you're running the software, if you turn tune on on that amp while holding this button down, and, and this is the order of operation, hold down the tune button, then start the tune, turning on the G90, sending the signal through, put it at one watts too. Uh, all of a sudden, it tunes it up beautifully, wonderfully even. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm not using the tune button anymore. I'm holding the tune on the amp, then sending in the power via the tune on WSJTX, and, and that seems to be bulletproof. So do that. I was working with this for half an hour or so. What I would notice is when we got close to the end of the 15 second cycle for WSJTX, the power would drop, would start incrementally going down. It would start at about 80 and then end up 70, 65, which gave, us a, gave me a pretty clear indication that the heat was building up and it was um, skewing our SWR. So by going straight to the whip, and having what I think is close to a resonant antenna on 20 meters, we should get a better result. At least that's my hope. Also of note, I have the ATU off right now and I'm at a 1.1 to one on that whip. So it's getting all the power. I think so anyway, or most of it. Well, I've been out here for, what is this? About three hours of uh, transmitting into my hot dog vertical. And uh, we're gonna check on it right now. I, I'm gonna touch the sides of it and see if it's it's warm. Uh, really, that's my only way of knowing until I take off the foil. But I, I don't know what to expect at this point. I actually, I've, I've touched it twice now and uh, it's not warm at all. So, don't know. We, we did remove the, the Cha Micro and that could help, but uh, I, I'm not expecting a whole lot, to be honest. Let's go take a look. These don't feel warm at all. No change. Not a bit. Hmm. Now I think I should mention, of course, I'm not doing this to imply that you shouldn't worry about RF exposure. Not, not at all. Uh, I really just wanted to see what would happen. I, I appreciate that uh, heat would be a byproduct of a mismatched antenna. So what we're dealing with exactly going into the hot dogs is straight up RF, at least that's my goal. I don't want it to just warm up uh, with, with heat. That would, again, imply a mismatch to the antenna. What we're looking for here is to see the effects of RF exactly against the skin of the hot dog. And I should note, I have an astronomical amount of signals here. This antenna is doing pretty well as, as far as receiving and um, for transmitting, which is, which is pretty nice. Nothing interesting has happened. It's five o'clock and no sizzling, no warmth, nothing. So I'm gonna pull this one down, take a look at it, and uh, I, I have something, an ace up my sleeve, hopefully, but uh, let, let's take a look at this first. I mean, I, I guess an ace up my sleeve would be just a barbecue, a grill, heck, even a microwave. All right, let's take a look at this. 
I'm going to reuse this foil on my next attempt with a different antenna. I mean, they're, they're kind of wrinkled, but they're definitely not cooked. I think the, 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 the marks are just from the foil. So that's disappointing. I want something more interesting to happen. Well, let's, let's mix things up a little bit. I refuse to be defeated by a hot dog. So, ah. let's see what this bad boy can do. Okay. I've, I've got a hot dog that I'm going to wrap around this aluminum outer loop on this chameleon antenna F loop. And in fact, I'm going to put one on that side just to balance it out. Now, I, I, I tuned this up uh, on 40 meters to the G90 already, putting out 20 watts. But uh, I'm assuming this is going to vary the tune significantly. Yep, through the roof. Yeah, it took an adjustment. And got a little bit. A little bit of SWR I got to sort out there. A little high. Well, I'm calling it. Let's... No, no change. I think... Uh... I think this might have been a... <laughs> Fun experiment, but altogether, nope. No change, no scores, no marks. Fun experiment, but altogether fruitless experiment. Well, after doing some editing and some comments on Patreon, I think a lot of you are gonna say that foil completely wrapped around the hot dogs created some kind of Faraday cage. Well, I don't think that's true because the aluminum is literally touching the antenna. So it's going to radiate through the hot dog. I'm going to do this one more time and I'm going to connect just a piece of wire around a bare hot dog. Uh, so at, at tremendous loss or at least tremendous damage with hot dog juice on my chameleon whip, we're going to do this again. So I'm going to adjust that antenna so it's resonant on 10, sorry, 10 meters. Uh, and then I'll put the 100 watts through it. So cue the time lapse. A lot less fanfare on this one, but who knows? I'm gonna take a couple of dogs here, <laughs> dry them off a bit. Uh, these are probably not gonna be for human consumption because I am going to just wire them uh, with some twist tie wire directly to our antenna mast. All right, let's show you what I did here. We got hot dog wrapped with a wire wind, you know, just a simple twist tie. And then we've got another hot dog right there. So we're dogged out. Let's hit it with the RF. We got a 1.5 to 1 SWR. You can see the readout down here. Maybe you can't on the camera, but. And we're off. So we got all this RF we're playing with. Uh, I thought it would be fun to add to the experiment. I've got a nail. It's an enamel nail. I scraped off the enamel on the end and the tip. And then the bare wire of the zip tie. I'm going to feed this into a hot dog, insulate myself, and then touch the antenna as we're transmitting. Let's see what happens. Okay, we have our <laughs> human analog probe. <laughs> okay, we have a hot dog. <laughs> it's uh, connected to the ground of the antenna, the radio line, and we're transmitting. I've insulated myself. We'll sit here for a couple cycles. Waiting for the transmit. Uh, interesting, there is a, maybe a mark? Okay, let, let's get a real clean spot. So nothing, <laughs> Jeez. So no, no, uh, no damage on the hot dog other than just the little 
spots that are normally on a hot dog here. Pretty clean hot dog. Nothing, nothing happening to it. No bites. This cat's trying to get my, uh, my glizzies here. He knows what's up. Trying to get that hot dog, aren't you, George? I see what you're doing. It's been two hours. I, I think we can take a, a baseline test here. I really don't want to keep this going much longer because I think the results are going to be the same. But I did this so that I wouldn't get a ton of comments basically saying, well, that's not going to work uh, because of the foil uh, wrap thing. So really, uh, I'm doing this for you all that, that are curious about that. Okay. So right off the line here, no warmth, uh, but I do see kind of a, a discoloring along the line. It is slightly darker red. That's it. I, I don't know if that's enough of a result to actually claim that we got cooking. There's absolutely no warmth. It could just be discoloration from being pressed tightly. As you can see, I had it kind of tightly wrapped. Although there is some color coloration here with the wire where the wire was as well. So maybe that's some kind of result, but two hours was not enough to, to cook this in any appreciable way. So I, I'm thinking this is busted personally. Have fun, bud. Same result on this one as well. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call that a, a, a result of, of cooking, of the RF. Um, don't know. What do you think? Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Well, we didn't have a success today, guys. I learned a couple of things. Uh, I expected more damage to the hot dog than uh, we saw. I, I saw no damage whatsoever and no appreciable temperature change. Maybe I shouldn't be surprised, though. Um, again, this isn't to downplay the effects of radio frequencies upon, <laughs> upon human tissue or anything else living. You should be considerate of that. But at the same time, it was very interesting what we were able to see today. Appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Click subscribe if you have not. Click that bell so I can send you a video every time I post one or I go live. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching the Ham Radio Crash Course. See ya. It's pretty good. <laughs>